Hello, welcome to our part 2 video of Form 4 Additional Mathematics System of Equation which is chapter 3. So in this video we are going to learn how to solve simultaneous equation. But before that we try to recall what we have learned in a part 1 video. So in part 1 video we learned about what are the systems of linear equations in 3 variables. What are the types of solution? Which is, uh, there are three types. First, when we are solving the system of linear equations, we can, we might get one solution, infinite solution, or we have no solutions at all. And the last thing we learned in the part one video is how to solve the system of linear equations in three variables by using the elimination method or the substitution method. So this part two video, we are going to learn how to solve a simultaneous equation. So what we have learned before on solving simultaneous equation uh, is this. The two equations given here are both linear equations and both are in two variables. Okay, so linear equations in two variables. But this time, we are going to try to solve simultaneous equations involving one linear equation and one non-linear. For example, this is the linear equation and the non-linear is this. It's quite obvious that a non-linear equation uh, means the variables, one, one or more of the variables given here has a higher degree of 2 or more, which means one of the variables has a higher power of 2 or more. So let's look at more examples of a linear equation and non-linear equation before we try to solve it. Linear equations, okay, here all the variables given has a power of 1, whereas non-linear equations, the power has 2. The power of the variables is 2 or more. And even though for this case both is 1, since the variables multiply each other, we consider this as a non-linear equation. So now we try to learn how to solve simultaneous equation involving these two equations. So we look at the example 1 here. So the first thing we always do is label both equations as 1 and 2. And take note that this is the linear, this is the non-linear. So we take the linear equation from 1. We try to take one of the variables as the subject. We can take either x or y in this case. So since we take y here, we move the x to the other side. And the negative here, we also move the other side. We get y equals to negative 2. Negative times negative, you get positive. So plus 2x. So we rewrite this and we label it as equation number 3. So remember, equation 3 here is still a linear equation and we substitute the linear equation into the non-linear equation, which is equation number 2 here. The y here is substituted by this, 2x minus 2. So y here, substitute by 2x minus 2, we expand and simplify this. Expand, simplify. So x squared plus 4x squared, you get 5x squared minus 4x minus 4x, you get minus, uh, minus 8x. And we solve this, you get this. And the 8 here, we move here. Plus 4 minus 8, you get negative 4. We try to factorize this, if able. So since for this case, it is it's able to be factorized, we can find the value of x by using this. So x equals to negative 2 over 5 or x equals to 2. So the, the factorized part we already learned in mathematics and additional mathematics. There are three ways, either factorization, completing the square or using the formula. So in this case, factorizing is the, the fastest. After we find the value of x, we still have to find the value of y. We substitute the value of x into equation 3. So you substitute into 3. Hence, when x is negative 2 over 5, y equals to this. So equation 3 is this. This means we substitute the x value we just found into here. So we substitute negative 2 over 5 into this. And you calculate, you, you get the answer. Then the second x, don't forget, we substitute into equation 3. Then you get this. And we rewrite all the answers. So when x is negative 2 over 5, y is negative 14 over 5, leave your answers in fraction form and when x is 2, y is 2. We look at the second example. Example 2. 
we label equation one equation two so notice here one is linear equation two is non-linear and we use the same step from linear equation always start from linear equation we try to take one of the variables as a subject so we move x here and then we move 3 here you get y equals to negative 2x minus 1 over 3 then we label this as equation number 3 and we substitute this equation into the nonlinear equation always follow the same step substitute this into here so you get this so 6 divided by 3 becomes 2 you have 2x here expand this get this simplify it get this and then we try to simplify it again and now for this case uh, we cannot you can try but we actually cannot factorize this so whenever we cannot factorize it is always advisable to use the formula this is the safest way to get the answer so you just substitute in the values of a b a and c then you get the answer x equals to this and this give your answer in four decimal places and after you get the values of x don't forget you need to substitute this into equation equation 3 substitute x value here to find the y values so when x is this y is this when x is negative 1.7863 you get this and this rewrite the whole answer Besides using substitution method, you can use elimination method or you can use the graphical representation method which is the last part of this part 2 video and so now, you are given simultaneous linear equation again to solve okay, so you have linear, non-linear because y is squared and you need to solve this by using graphical representation method means you need to draw a graph for both equations to draw a graph, the first thing you do, you construct a table for both graphs. So you construct a table with the values of x and y for both of these equations. You construct a table with x. x can be any values here if it is not given in the question. And the second row here is the value of y in the first equation, this equation. Then the third row will be the value of y in the second equation second equation so we try to fill in the values here and we plot the graph so when x is 0 this is 0 negative y equals to 4 so y equals to negative 4 when x is 1 when x is 1 here 2 times 1 is 2 we move the 2 here and then we calculate the answer you get y equals to negative 2 and then so on and how about for the second one when x is 0 when x is 0 this becomes 0, y squared equals to 0, y equals to 0. When x is 1, when x is 1 here, y squared minus 4. Okay, when x is 1, squared minus 4 equals to 0. We move the 4 here, becomes y squared equals to 4. When we want to get rid of the square, here becomes square root. And whenever you use the square root, remember you have to use the plus minus sign. And you get the answer, y equals to plus minus 2. That's why we have a plus minus 2 here means when x is 1, y can either be positive 2 or negative 2. Same applies here. When x is 2, y is positive 2.8 or negative 2.8. So we fill in all the values, we try to plot the graph. So when we plot the first equation, we get a straight line because it's a linear equation. So you have a straight line. Then we plot the second graph which is a curve. This is the first line, this is the second line. Since y squared here, so it's a curve, so we plot this. And to solve the simultaneous equation, we are looking for the coordinates of the intersection point. We find the coordinate of this, which is 4, 4. And here, 1, negative 2. So for this point, 4, 4, for this point, 1, negative 2. So this are the two sets of solution when x is 4 y is 4 when x is 1 y is negative 2 this is the answer the intersection point give us the answer 
to solve the simultaneous equations. So that's it. This is the end of uh, part two video. And